You may have seen the Lieutenant Governor's statement yesterday supporting the letter written by senators uh, who believe that the, the uh, calls by the regions to further investigate the UT Law Foundation situation is unwarranted, that the Attorney General's office can take care of this. Uh, he believes, said so explicitly, that this is really an effort to get UT Austin and specifically President Powers. Do you agree? Well, I think that, uh, you know, the answer <coughs> to that is no in, in regards to, you know, individualizing that to one person. And in fact, uh, Vice Chairman Foster, you know, absolutely stated that. Now, you know, this was a split vote uh, requiring Vice Chairman Foster to actually, you know, vote affirmatively. And, well, he uh, wasn't and, required to vote affirmatively. He chose to vote affirmatively. Well, he chose to vote affirmatively. And it's not a surprise to me that because of that, uh, there has been a lot of press coverage for this. And, uh, but I'd also like to state that that one vote doesn't define uh, the Board of Regents, and it doesn't define the University of Texas system. So you don't think that we're, we're to read anything more into that? You know, Governor Dewhurst is not alone. Dallas Morning News editorial page a couple days ago, Chairman Pitts. Regent Hicks on his Facebook page. Regent Hicks and Chairman Pitts both used the phrase witch hunt. Is that wrong? They both believe it's a witch hunt. Well, you know, again, as Chancellor of the University of Texas system, um, I do not believe it's a witch hunt. Um, you know, my perspective is, uh, and let me be clear of this, everybody's been asking how I evaluate presidents. And we had a conversation about this. We have uh, had many. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And when you take a look at Bill Powers' work plan, and you take a look at the accomplishments of this president, yeah. his work plan has four goals. You know, one is graduation rates. Number two is cost containment. Number three is research expenditures. Number four is philanthropy. So let's go down those four lists. So on graduation rates, President Powers was the first president among our nine academic campuses to state that we will increase the four-year graduation rate from 53% to 75%. And he put his neck out on the line, and he's going to do it. Right. Second. When you talk about research expenditures, despite uh, federal you know, government really pulling back, UT Austin has continued to increase its research expenditures in the most peer-reviewed and rigorous yeah. grants. And th these are NIH grants, NSF grants, DOE grants. When you talk about cost containment, uh, he basically also followed a goal of the framework, uh, which stated, let's take a look at our organizational structure. Let's see where we can contain costs so that we can reallocate our dollars to the mission of this university and put those dollars to the students. Well, through this organizational review, he's identified about $490 million that he can save over the next 10 years. And then let's talk about philanthropy. Bill Powers in UT Austin is bringing in about a million dollars a day. And then over the past three months, we had Susan and Michael Dell give a $50 million gift for the Dell School of Medicine. And then also, just last week, Bob Rowling. Robert Rowling right. gave a $25 million gift. So this sounds like a defense of President Powers from the Chancellor. So, you know, I, you know in regards to the work plan and in regards to the yeah. framework for, for, for advancing excellence, I would have to say that President Powers is doing his job. Do, are you, are, I, I, we'll come to Mr. Sharp here in a second. Are you obligated to participate in some, no? You want, you want to stay as far away as possible. Are you, are you obligated, sh should the new regents be confirmed, Mr. Foster reconfirmed, and come August they have the votes that they decide, despite what you said, that they want to remove President Powers, what is the role that you as chancellor have to play? Some regents I've talked to seem not to know whether they have the authority as a, a body of nine to do this without your involvement. Some people think that you have to act as the person to execute upon their wishes. Well, the chairman of the Board of Regents has uh, you know, unequivocally stated that uh, you know, the chancellor needs to recommend you know, a removal of a president. So without your recommendation, they can't, they, even if they have nine votes to remove President Powers, without your recommendation, they can't do it. Well, you know, governing boards can always change their policies. But as it stands today, right. the chancellor of the University of Texas system the, the, pre, the Board of Regents hires presidents, yeah. and the chancellor of the University of Texas system recommends uh, continu continuation or dismissal. of a president or dismissal. So let me ask you a quick question on this. So I'm, I'm, what comes to mind is the Saturday Night Massacre from Watergate. 
Are you going to be Elliot Richardson or Robert Bork in this situation? <laughs> <laughs> if, if, if you know that the regents want you to recommend the dismissal of President Powers, are you prepared to do that, or would you resign rather than do that if you believe that President Powers should remain in his job? I will always give my very best recommendation, and, and that is a Cigarroa core value. And if your recommendation is that he should stay, then that will be your recommendation despite their wishes. I always speak my mind. Right. Mr. Sharp.